Hey, what's up, guys? It's Savage G here. In this video, we're going to be going over the top five mutant characters in MCUC. Um, top five in 2020. Um, there's obviously two more months left, but I don't think this list is going to change. And if it does, then cool. But for right now, October, about to be November in a day, um, this video will be uploaded in November probably. So it's November for you right now. So top five right now. Um, for 2020 probably um, this is the mutant class out of all the classes I do this is probably gonna be the most debated and angry responses and just keep in mind this is just my opinion if you have a different one put it in the comments and say why but don't say it in an angry way and I might see your point I could see a lot of these definitely could be interchangeable with how strong this class is but it's not worth being angry over. It's just my opinion. Your opinion can be different, it's fine. But this one is very close, I'll say that. So just the honorable mentions real quick, we're gonna be putting Domino, Havoc, Sunspot, and the honorable mentions. So the fact that they're not in the top five, you know it's a pretty serious list. But this um, class is pimped out, I will say that. The class is very strong and very competitive. So number five, and Apocalypse, he's also honorable mention but he's not in the top five either number five we got namor um namor was one of the best i think he was number two for a while behind omega red uh, until a whole bunch of better characters got buffed but that's not the point i think he's number five overall because he's not really being used in the meta as much as he used to but he's still a really good character but the thing with namor that i think people are realizing is when, when we get six stars now six stars are very rare to get obviously and well not really really rare to get but it's really rare to have a SIG 200 character. And the problem with Namor is the meta is shifting to six stars. And character people like me who don't spend money on the game can't just get 200 six stones out of nowhere. And this guy needs to be max SIG to be really good. So that's the big problem with Namor. That's a big drawback. He needs to be SIG 200 if you want to like actually use him properly. Um, what this guy's SIG ability is, you ask, it's basically... He takes it while he's attacking the opponent. He's any like fun and interactive damage on him. He's reflecting back to them. So say you have like a D gen on yourself. While you're hitting the opponent, you're putting a hundred percent of the D gen that would be on you on them instead of you. So he, this is a really really strong ability, and that's basically why Namor is even in the top five. He has really strong damage when he gets into his Imperius Rex mode. But the main thing that reason why he's in the top five is the ability to just reflect all damage. And he's one of the top prestige characters in the game. Um, definitely top ten, I think. Top. I don't know if he's top five. He might be top five as a six star, but he's definitely top ten. So his prestige is really high. But it's really good to use this guy with suicides because he can just reflect all the damage and only just heal from the suicides with willpower because all the damage you would be taking is on them. So he's a very good character overall, but he's number five instead of being number two like he used to. Now a new character, or not a new character, an old character, he was coming back in the meta, thank God. I've been hyping this dude up for so long. And if you don't like this character, or you don't think he's top five worthy, that is most likely because you don't have him rank five as a five star. And that is Archangel. This dude is so good. If you can bleed and poison the opponent, it's, he's just the best character normally. <laughs> like, he's so strong. Um, that is one thing, though, with him, that if you can't bleed or poison the opponent, um, he's not good. But a lot of characters in the last year have not been released with bleed or poison immunity, so he's coming back in the meta. Um, people that don't have him, or don't do endgame content, don't realize, like, how, how many fights he's useful for. Like, in the Act 7 beta... There were like full paths of hard nodes, and there'd only be like maybe one or two fights he couldn't do on the path. Like most fights, this guy can do. It's just the fights where they're poison and bleeding moon, he can't do. Basically, what makes him good is you put bleeds on them, you put poisons, and then you change them into neurotoxins. And the neurotoxins are some of the strongest damage over time in the game. One of the strongest, I think the strongest maybe. If you can bleed and poison them. Whenever there's like a race in MCOC or like a fight to see who can do it the fastest. If they can be bled and poisoned, Archangel normally is the fastest to do it. His damage is just off the charts crazy. And what makes him even like so good is his neurotoxins. When you get him to like SIG like 100-ish, SIG 80, it's like around 33% ability accuracy reduction. 
So once you get three neurotoxins, magic can't activate limbo. Um, Iron Man can't uh, uh, arc overload. Like he just shuts down everything. He also will shut down the nodes a lot of times. There's a lot of nodes in the game. Like do put a bio sting, like the yellow jacket power sting, I think it's called. Or you do 90% last damage, and you get three node toxins. He kind of just turns off the node. Also, the um, I think selective time stream node, which is every 20 seconds. If you don't have a if you don't have a shock or incinerate, they'll just like take off all your debuffs and passives and re 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 regenerate to full. But his neurotoxins are passives, and they cancel regen. So he can't counter that node. Also, if you have even one neurotoxin, it turns off all regen on the opponent, no matter what. So for crazy regen fights, he just destroys it. I think you could search it up on YouTube when I rank five to this guy, like a few months ago. Actually, about a year ago at this point, maybe. You can watch the gameplay video of me fighting Realm of Legends Winter Soldier. I think I killed him in like 30 hits. So it, it's just bullying. He's just His damage is just so good. And the ability to just turn off annoying nodes, like the Act 7 beta, the pre-beta, the one that was like really shit that everyone hated, it was this retardedly hard mercy um saber tooth and search up that video he's like one of the only characters who one shot it other than like quake um so yeah he, he's just beast he's just so good for the extreme bullshit nodes they're not too common but when they are they could cost you thousands of units and this guy can just destroy him so he's just worth it just for that so archangel is number four i think he's solid number four i don't think many people could debate that honestly but the top three characters these are the most interchangeable. I think any one of these three characters can be number one, two, or three on your list. Any one of these three characters, depending on the fight. But I will say, if you have these three characters on a team, they can pretty much do everything uh, in the game, or most things in the game. The mutant class has gotten so strong, and the crazy thing to think about is two of the three of these characters were released in, like, 2015. So for my list... And keep in mind, any certain fight can make this guy number three, two, or one. But it's very close. I think overall, my list, number three, goes to Colossus. This guy is a powerhouse. He's bleed immune, cold snap immune, frostbite immune, I think, incinerate immune, um, immune to armor breaks, unless it's a tech character. He's just so good. Just with just with immunities already then you add on the fact that this guy's damage is just unreal six star rank to a colossus i got into a fight with this guy you just want to parry heavy basically that's the way you play him you build up armors and when you parry and heavy it, he eats the stun and he changes it into a fury and your heavy hits so hard i go into a fight the first heavy i throw the first crit is like 5,000, and the second one is like 16,000, or 22,000. Like, that's just when the fight starts. And he starts with three armor ups, and every time you parry, he gets one more. And every time um, he gets a debuff that he's immune to, he gets an armor break, or he's a chance to with his signature ability. I will say, he doesn't need to be awakened, but it's very good. It's very helpful. He, in super long content, or like big content, like Act 6, 7, I think he does need to be awakened. To be like pretty good, like really good, but like lower content, like Alliance War, um, he really doesn't need to be awakened. The fights just aren't big enough for that. Um, so his awakened ability is very good to have six two hundred. It's very helpful for like massive content, but smaller content he doesn't need it. Um, but basically, you can naturally get to twenty armor ups permanently with his um, permanent armor ups and parries and getting in immunities on him and shit like that. And at 20 armor ups, you don't even need to do the parry heavy. Like, his every armor up is a certain amount of damage. What is it? Let me see. Right, so, for each armor up he has, it's an additional 25 crit damage rating. So, when you use this guy and you're at 20 armor ups, he just hits like a truck when he crits, even without getting the fury buff. And, not to mention, when he throws a special 2, I think every armor up he has has like a 50% chance to just um, get another one. Like, if you have 10 armor ups, statistically, but they're in the special 2, half of them will double, so you'll go up to 15 armor ups. So, if you get lucky and, you, and you're at 20 armor ups and you throw a special 2, you can get to, like, 30, 40 around there. And the damage at that point is just, like, most things die. Most things die before you can get to 40 or 30 armor ups. But his damage is just so maximum, dude. 
Oh, so another thing to keep in mind is, um, yeah, where is it? What was I about to say? Um, I don't know. I forgot what I was going to say. But he does have a shit ton of armor buffs, which makes him extremely tanky. Like, if you get hit with this guy, um, like a full combo, an X6, he won't really take that much damage when you have a shit ton of armor. It's just so much armor that just he just negates so much damage. It, he's just such a tank. And then you also mix him with a Mega Red and, like, Emma Frost. And the synergies just make him even better. I think Omega Red synergy is like two to four percent more attack for every armor up you have. So that's just like if you're at twenty, he goes up to like forty to sixty, or forty to like eighty percent more attack, or whatever the buff is. He's just insane. So he's number three, but once again, he could be number one or number two based on the fight. Now number two and one are very close. I mean, I guess they're all three very close, but this one I don't really know. For me, right now, I'm going to put at number two, Magneto. This guy was a 2015, 2016 champ, I believe, and he was so bad. But, like, they didn't do him justice because Magneto, you know, he's, like, such an OG character in the Marvel Universe. So they did him justice a few months ago and they buffed him. You've never seen a character go from some of the worst in the class straight up to arguably best in the class. Like, that's so rare. This is the best buff they've ever done. This guy... His damage is just, like, just straight up stupid. If you've ever seen a metal character, okay, they can't regenerate at all, and they have minus 70% ability accuracy overall. So right off the bat, you've ever seen Wolverine, he can't regenerate. Just like just like that. Any metal character that can't regenerate is a minus 105% regeneration rate, so they kind of lose a little bit of health, but it's not enough to really be a big deal. Um, and basically the way this guy works is... And he doesn't need to be awakened, which makes him very nice, too. He doesn't really need the awakened at all. It just does some extra damage, but it's, like, not that big of a deal. But the way you play this guy is you parry, you hold heavy, charge up your prowess, and you throw your heavy. And then you repeat up until special three. And then you throw a special three, and the fight's normally over. Um, basically, the way he works is whenever you hold on um, heavy to charge your prowess, it'll double your prowess up to 35. It'll double it up to 30. So if you're at, like, 17 and you hold heavy... And then plus the heavy alone. The heavy will give you plus one. So it'll double and plus one to 18. So it'll be 35 prowess. And for non-metal champions, you can't go past 35 prowess. And then you throw a special three. But that's still mm, more than enough to kill most characters in the game. But then with metal characters, um, you can go past 35. You can go infinite, I'm pretty sure. But it doesn't double past 35, so it's only plus one. So you got 35 prowess to throw a heavy. 36, 37, 38 prowess over and over again. But you can build this up to infinite amounts to do some crazy things like one shot the Kang and shit like that. And when you throw a special three, let me see, let me read the exact percentage. Um, every one of your prowesses, uh, where is it? Oh yeah, each prowess buff you have is a 70% chance to inflict a bleed. So you have, what, like 100 prowess, or well, let's say a normal number. You have 30 prowess, okay, 35. You'll probably proc like 20, 25, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less. Around 25 bleeds if you're lucky. And these bleeds are so strong. Like, you, you go to like a do you bleed path in Act 6, you throw one special 3, this bleed can almost one-shot slash one-shot. It can almost one-shot non-metal characters, but if they're metal, um, let's read again. If, if they're metal, where did it? It doesn't even show it. It doesn't show it for some reason. But if they're metal, let me see this. Okay, yeah. So if they're a metal character, when any bleed debuff ends, they are upgraded to a shrapnel bleed. So say you put down a bleed. You throw a special three against like Realm of Legends Winter Soldier. Uh, this bleed will do like the special three alone will do a lot of damage, and then the bleed after can, well, every tick is like twelve thousand bleed or something. So it's something crazy like that, and it lasts for how long? It lasts for eight seconds, and every tick is like twelve thousand. So it's like twenty four thousand a second, and then when it ends, it, when all the bleeds end, um, they are um, they will inflict physical damage when they end each one, each bleed. So each bleed. So if you have ten bleeds. And each one does 1,500, you'll do 15,000, okay, um, direct damage. But normally, 
the shrapnel bleed will end and you'll do like 75 to like 80,000 direct damage, just a red number. So if you see Rama Legends or just Soldier, you search for a video, pretty much one special three kills him. And that's just talking about, that's just talking about characters that can be bled. I know I'm talking a lot on Magneto, but there's just so much to say. The characters that can't be bled, you'd think he'd be at a disadvantage, but he's even better. Um, if they are bleed immune, they will die. They will fucking die, unless they're like a thing who's immune to armor breaks. So instead of placing bleeds, um, if they're bleed immune, it'll place armor breaks. And the armor breaks will be placed, um, like right click the special three, the armor breaks will already be on them. So the special three damage will be multiplied with the armor breaks. And unless it has a damage cap, it won't survive. Like it just straight up won't survive. I have first a 500,000 health sentinel, one special three, it just kills him. The armor breaks are so strong. Uh, how much are the armor breaks actually? Let's see. The armor breaks are, uh, let's see, where are the armor breaks? Armor breaks, armor breaks, armor breaks. Oh yeah, um, the armor breaks is 525. And you got like 30 of five of those. It's a big multiplier. So, things die. I think I did the math, and I think his special three against non-bleed bleeding opponents are like 1.2 to 1.5 million damage. So he one shots everything if they don't if they are immune to bleed basically, and if they don't like in the abyss, they'll still have like 35 armor breaks on them, and your mediums will do like 15 20k on a crit. It's just disgusting. And if they're metal also. They can't be auto-blocked or missed. So like Sentinel, for example, he just bullies them. You have 50% perfect block chance. There's so much to say. He's just so good. He's so fucking good. If you have a Magneto, just do yourself a finger, favor and rank him up. I'm pretty sure even like a three-star Magneto. Actually, I should test that. I should test. I think a three-star Magneto special three could still do like 500,000 damage. I don't know. But his damage is just fucking unreal. Also, he has some pretty good synergies, but that's not really what makes him good. He's just so good. Arguably best in the mutant class, but number one, I think we all know, since I've said Colossus and Magneto, it's a Mega Red. Um, this guy, I, I think I think he's still number one, just because at, like, SIG 200, he does need to be awakened, though. That's one thing, like, if all of the characters on this list were unawakened, Magneto and Colossus would be better than him, just without even a doubt, but... When he's awakened, his damage is so like just basic, but it's just so good. It's just you get the spores up with a bleed. Also, you have to run suicide and use this guy. Also, I forgot to mention on Magneto, he's also immune. To, he's res he's like ninety percent resistant to bleed. So if you have the resignate, I think it's called resignate mastery. He just heals from bleed. So when you use suicide, it's kind of like Corvus. You just heal from it. So he's super suicide friendly since he's just on special threes, but. A Mega Red also benefits very much from suicides, so you can start the fight with his death field up. And basically the way he works is you get your death field up, and past 10 charges, the damage just gets exponentially higher, and you can get up to 30 pretty easily. And things just die. Just every tick, every second they have it up, they just take so much damage. And what makes a Mega Red so good is the fact that you can deal so much damage, kind of like Quake, and not really have to touch the opponent that much. Quake doesn't have to touch them at all, but he, he has to touch them, but, like, really barely. And, um, he's just so good. There's not much to say about a Mega Red. He can also heal a lot from his special one and special three by eating his, um, his, um, like, uh, charges. And what makes a Mega Red so good is all that, and then on top of the fact that makes the mutant class so strong, is he has a very strong synergy, I think I was telling you, with, um, Colossus. 2% attack rating for each armor up. Uh, so, you know, you have him, Magneto, and Colossus on a team, okay? Or even, yeah, those three alone. Omega Red's making, Omega Red is just an overall beast, okay? Wait, what does he get from this energy? He gets 4% critical damage for each Death Spore on the opponent. So if you have 30 Death Spore, which you can get to pretty easily, you're doing 120% more crit damage, which is really good. So you're hitting like a fucking truck, even more than normal. Then you have Colossus, who's hitting like a truck even more than normal with all these immunities. And the only weakness Omega Red has is against robot characters. And as we know, Magneto fucking bullies them. 
So if you have these three on a team, they basically bully everything in the game. And then you put like Quake and Ghost as the fourth and fifth. All I'm saying is what makes the mutant class so strong is that the top three characters in the class synergize with each other so well. And they can do like every fight. So I know this video has been very long, but there's just so much to say. You can really interchange Magneto, Colossus, or Omega Red for the top spot as the main class, but they're just, they're, I can't stress this enough, they're so fucking good, dude. When I get, I have a tier 5 mutant, I'm probably going to use it on Omega Red or Colossus, probably Colossus, but when I get them both awakened, I'm almost at a second one, I can have a rank 3 Colossus, rank 3 Omega Red awakened hopefully one day, and then 5 star max out Magneto. Maybe six star rank three one day also. And it's just bullying, dude. Like, nothing survives this trio. And then, you know, maybe you could have Archangel as a fourth for the fourth mutant who just, um, for any of some bullshit magics or whatever. But our Mega Red also counters that. And Mega Red's medium hits are, like, they're non contact, so they work against Electro, Korg. Um, if you use them to push magic over her, a bar of power, it doesn't, she doesn't trigger Limbo for some reason. It's kind of weird. Um, he, he's just so good. Also, another thing about Magneto is, um, what was I going to say? If he's version a tech character, since a lot of middle characters are tech, um, they get mine, they don't, their class advantage gets canceled out and his weakness gets canceled out. And it's basically just like a neutral fight, like no advantages or disadvantages. So that makes him good for fighting tech characters since a lot of the metal characters are tech. So just to recap real quick, we have Namor fifth, where's Namor? Namor fifth. Archangel 4th, Colossus 3rd, Magneto 2nd, and Omega Red 1st. But I did say the top 3 are definitely interchangeable. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Give a like, comment, subscribe. Um, I understand this class is definitely the most competitive and people have a lot of arguments over it. So don't crucify me if you have a different opinion. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Give a like, comment, subscribe. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.